Hello, welcome to Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is helping to lead worship, I welcome you. We are so excited that you have chosen to worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church today. If it is your first time to worship with us, we're just really glad that you're here. And I want to encourage you to use our contact form. I want to encourage everybody to use our contact form. The link to that is in the comment section. And there's a QR code on your screen as well. Uh, the contact form is a great way just to put some information in there so that we can get in touch with you, that we can come up alongside you in your journey of faith, answer questions, get you our e-newsletter with all of the information about Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and ministries and opportunities. There's also a place on that contact form for you to put prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. So I really want to encourage you to use that uh, contact form today. Now, when we do gather together for worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. And what that means is that we're going to participate in this time of worship. This isn't just some random video that you've come across. We are worshiping. We are worshiping God. We are worshiping with one another as a community of faith. And so we want you to participate. Stand up and sing when it's time to sing. Pray with us when it's time to pray. Really focus in during this time. We encourage you to turn off other distractions and devices. Maybe light a candle if that helps you to focus. But really participate in worship. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means the way that we are in the comment section together, the way we may be gathered with some other folks wherever it is that we are, the way that we're sending this out, this worship out into the world, that all of it is a blessing to everyone who's participating today. So that's our covenant to participate and to bless. Now this is the fourth Sunday of Easter. Our Easter celebrations continue and we're going to have a special guest preacher today, the Reverend Curtis Brown. I'll say some more about him in a little bit, but welcome to worship. Hi, we're the Sam and Yegos. My name is Albert. I'm Allison. And this is Caleb. Please join us in a call to worship and shout hallelujah with us. God's love is for everyone and everlasting. So our Easter celebrations continue because Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please join us in singing, Love the Lord.
Hi, I'm Hannah Brown. And I'm Karen Brown. Please join us in the spirit of prayer. Wrap us in the arms of your love, holy God, as we worship together today. Teach us to be patient and kind in our actions and humble of heart in all of our ways. Help us to see and know ourselves as well as you see and know us, that our words may be true and our love pure. Build us into a community that bears all things, believes all things, and hopes all things. In your love, which never ends. Amen. Amen. Now let's share the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me and those folks, or in these folks in our church community. Peace be with you. And also with you. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jan Crable. I'm a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and I'm a member of the Elizabeth Circle. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Amanda. And I'm Mandy. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Madeline Woodruff. I go to the Zephyr Sunday School class at Douglas Avenue, and I am a um, Memorials Membership Committee person, and I've done a lot of cookies for the cookie walk. And peace be with you. <laughs> it's time for small talk, everybody. This is a special time for our children that is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries and Laud the Lamb. So I wanna encourage all of the children who are with us to get in really close to your device, get in really close to your screen so that you can hear and see absolutely everything that happens with small talk. Good morning, everyone. I am Miss Lori. This is Laud the Lamb. And today, I would like to talk to you about moms. Now, before I became a mom, I used to carry a purse like this. Mm -hmm. But now that I am a mom, I carry a purse that looks like this. One of the great mysteries of the world is what is in a mom's purse. Mm -hmm. So we're going to explore what is in this purse. No, not everything. We're not gonna take everything out of the purse. That would be, no. Okay, we have a calendar. Clearly, moms have to stay on top of things. Um, what else is in here, Laud? We have, oh, a book. I spend a lot of time just waiting right now. I drive places and then I wait places. So I have a book that I'm reading. Mm -hmm. No, no, you cannot have that. But yes, a snack. Somebody might get hungry. Um, oh, an EpiPen. Somebody's allergic to bees. Need this. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, sunscreen. Have to have sunscreen. Um, let's see. Oh, phone. Can't go anywhere without the phone. Um, masks. More masks. Oh, wait. Another mask. Yeah. Excedrin migraine. Lipstick, Kleenex, tears, and colds and allergies. Oh, oh yeah, car key kind of goes along with the book and the waiting and the uh, the things. Mhm. Mm yeah, car key. Um. Oh look, more masks. more keys to other things. Oh, and there's a wallet in here and a, a checkbook. See, and, oh. Well, I'm getting there, I'm getting it. Gum. Lens cleaners. 
Mm. Now, what I'm about to pull out, I don't carry with me every day, but I probably should. Mm -hmm. A holy Bible, right? Not only is it a guide to life, but it's the best guide for motherhood. Mm -hmm. It's also the best good for kidhood, right? For all you kiddos out there, everything you need to know is in here, right? Even, especially for today, honoring thy father and thy mother. It's one of God's top 10, okay? Yeah, mom's top 10 might be, you know, clean your room, eat your vegetables, take a bath, comb your hair, take out the trash, read your Bible. But one of God's top 10 is honor your mother. So keep that in mind today and maybe do some of mom's top 10s too today. Clean something, take out the trash. Give her a big hug and say, I love you. Yeah. Love you guys and happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Good morning. My name is Janet Schmidt and I'm the organist here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Our reading from the Bible is 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 through 13. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through our Bible reading. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. May God add, bless our hearing and our understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. I'm so grateful to introduce the Reverend Curtis Brown as our guest preacher today. Besides being my wonderful husband, the father of our active daughters and best friend of Splat the Cat, Curtis helps lead our youth group and greeters for worship in the sanctuary here at Douglas Avenue. Curtis is an elder in the United Methodist Church and for his day job serves as the Director of Connectional Ministries for the Illinois Great Rivers Conference of the United Methodist Church. In this role, he helps facilitate mission and ministries of United Methodist Churches all around Illinois when they collaborate together from camping to disaster response to starting new churches. Thank you, Curtis, for bringing our special message today. Good morning. This week we're celebrating Mother's Day and I wanna wish a very happy Mother's Day to all of you who are being honored as mothers. For some people, Mother's Day is a straightforward opportunity to give thanks for their mom and express their appreciation for her love. But for other people, Mother's Day can be complicated. For those who are grieving the death of a mother, for those who are estranged from mothers, for those who do not know their birth mother, for those who mourn the death of a child, for those with strange relationships between mothers and children, and for those who feel they just don't fit into societal conventions of what a mother should be. 
For many, Mother's Day comes with a lot of conflicting feelings. This has always been true of Mother's Day commemorations uh, from the very beginning. Although there's a long history of holidays commemorating mothers, Mother's Day as we know it was founded by Anna Jarvis in the early 1900s. Anna's mother, Anne, was the daughter of a Methodist pastor, a social activist, and a community organizer of relief and justice throughout West Virginia during the Civil War. Anna recalled how her mother had been teaching a Sunday school class in their Methodist church and had said, I hope and pray that someday someone, sometime, will found a Memorial Mother's Day commemorating her for the matchless service she renders to humanity in every field of life. She is entitled to it. When Ann Jarvis died, Anna Jarvis decided to honor her mother's memory by establishing an annual celebration of mothers. The first official Mother's Day celebration was May 10th, 1908, at Andrews Methodist Church in Grafton, West Virginia. Anna Jarvis then worked to expand this recognition, and by 1914, the U.S. Congress had passed a bill establishing the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day. The holiday quickly took off as a marketing opportunity for florists, department stores, greeting card publishers, and candy mer merchants. This movement towards commercialization of Mother's Day greatly disturbed Anna Jarvis. She saw that Mother's Day was becoming something less honest than what it was, and that it was moving away from her own mother's values and beliefs. Anna Jarvis began to protest against the increasingly saccharine and insincere store-bought Mother's Day marketing. In 1948, she was arrested for disturbing the peace while protesting the very Mother's Day commemoration that she had helped to found. Eventually, Anna Jarvis was placed in a sanatorium for mental instability. People associated with the floral and greeting card commercial groups paid for her treatment there and helped to keep her in that sanatorium until her death. Mother's Day has always been complicated because mothering has always been complicated. And mothering has always been complicated because love is complicated. In our youth Sunday school class, we've been studying relationships for the past couple of weeks. We started out by looking at relationships in our families, then relationships with our friends, and now we're looking at romantic relationships. This week, we're learning that even though our English language has just one word for love, the New Testament Greek language has at least three, each with a different way of thinking about what love means. The word for a romantic love is eros, the word for familial love is philos, and the word for divine self-sacrificing love is agape. It's this word agape that Paul uses in our scripture passage from 1 Corinthians 13. Although it's a popular passage to read at weddings, Paul is not really talking about love as the romantic love between two people, nor is he talking about the love between family members. He certainly isn't talking about love the way we often use it to describe highly liking something. It's not like the way we'd say, I love my new shoes, or I love Beyonce's music. Instead, Paul is talking about a different kind of love, a love that reorients our priorities away from ourselves and onto another person, a love that transcends our desires and places us in a different kind of relationship with that person. Paul describes agape love this way. This kind of love is patient with the other person. This kind of love is kind. It is not jealous or envious or boastful or cruel or arrogant or inconsiderate or rude or mean. This kind of love does not insist on always being right or getting its way regardless of what others need or want. It is not easily angered or irritable. It forgives easily and doesn't keep a list of what the other person has done wrong. This kind of love does not gloat when the other person makes a mistake. This kind of love sees value in the other person 
and for their sake is willing to bear with the relationship, believe in the relationship, hope for the relationship, and endure the hard times together. Some people have experienced this kind of love frequently in their lives. Other people feel that they've never experienced it. Some have been loved like this by a spouse or partner. Some have been loved like this by a sibling or biological family or adopted family or chosen family. Some have been like this, loved like this in a mentoring, by a mentoring adult or a grandparent or a neighbor or a friend's parent, or a father. And on Mother's Day, we recognize all of those who have been loved like this and have loved like this as a mom, whether by birth or adoption or choice. Anna Jarvis founded Mother's Day because she experienced this generous, unselfish, encouraging, heartfelt, expansive, patient, forgiving, and affirming love from her mom, and she wanted to celebrate it. In the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 9, Jesus reminds his disciples that as much as God loves him, so Jesus loves his disciples. And then he instructs them, make your home in love. The heart of God is to love, and the task of those who are loved by God is to love one another. As we are celebrating the sometimes complicated feelings of Mother's Day, I want you to know that God does indeed love you. I know that there are some people hearing this that may not believe that they are very lovable, but I want you to hear that you are indeed loved. I know that there are others hearing this who feel that they've never really experienced love, but I want you to hear that you are indeed loved loved. And I know that there are some who are hearing this today who have only felt love that has used them, abused them, hurt them, manipulated them, and they're afraid to love and be loved again lest it do them more harm. But I want you to hear that you are indeed truly and wonderfully loved by God. I want you to hear that God loves you with an agape kind of mothering love, a love that does not seek to do you harm, a love that doesn't keep a list of wrongs, a love that doesn't run away when things get hard, a love that doesn't cast you aside when some self-righteous human judge declares that you are too sinful, broken, weird, or horrible to be loved. God's love bears, believes, hopes, and endures all things. For God is love, and we who are God's children are beloved in the way that we dream divine mothers love their children. And filled with this love, we make our lives awash in love, and we share this love with all of the rest of God's beloved children throughout all creation. Amen, and thanks be to God for mothering us in love. Amen. Please join us in singing The Gift of Love.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Cami Omancy, and I would ask that you please join with me in an attitude of prayer, open-hearted and with an open mind. Let us go together. Heavenly Father, for the beauty and for the joy and for the wonder of this day, we give you thanks. We gather together electronically. We gather together personally. We gather together to seek you, Lord, to hear you, to find you, to praise you, and to worship you. Hear these prayers that we want to share with you, some very outbound, some very personal, and very intimate. Father, you know our hearts. You know where our minds are. So as we come together, Heavenly Father, please hear our prayers. For joys, we give you thanks for a beautiful and a lovely open house for Wouldn't It Be Lovely. We give you thanks for the new members of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We give you thanks for the ways that we can congregate together, the ways that we can come together, the ways that we can fellowship with one another. We ask that you bless each and every one of the individual classes and groups that come together and they share your word, they gain in your wisdom, and they grow together, again, in fellowship and in love. For our health concerns, Lord, we lift up so much that is heavy and burdened upon us. We give to you those that have received alarming diagnoses and bad health news. We pray for those that are in hospice or palliative care and for all of those that must surround them and support them and love them. We pray for injuries and all the broken parts, this majestic body that you have given to us, Lord, and the ways that it can break and the ways that it can heal. And we pray for healing in those ways. We pray for heart issues and surgeries. We pray for cancer patients and treatments, chemotherapies and radiations, immune therapies and experimentals, infusions, brain, colon, breast, lung. Lord, it is all heavy, and there's so much fear and trepidation that comes with it. So I pray, Lord, for these individuals today that you give them strength and you give them comfort and you give them peace. You surround them with caregivers and nurses and doctors and facilities that can help tend to them and take very good care of them. We pray for surgeries, treatments, rehabilitation, physical therapy, infections. We pray for those that are in assisted living situations in the facilities. We pray for all of those that have to take care of the individuals that find themselves in facilities. We are grateful, Lord, for excellent results from scans. We are grateful for family and friends that surround us. And within our congregation, we are aware that there's a lot of babies coming. So we pray for these mothers to be physically, emotionally, mentally, as you prepare mom and dad for the new things to come. You prepare the family for the new and the joyful things to come. Let them be the parents that you have designed them to be, to be these godly examples for these individuals that they bring into this world. We pray for parents that have to support children, and we pray for children that have to support their parents in whatever and however that dynamic may look and be. We pray for transplants, donors, for diabetes, and for results. We pray for MS and Parkinson's and things that rob our normal and our daily activity and how frustrating it can be, Lord, when our bodies don't work in the way that you have designed them to. Give us patience in those moments. Give us opportunity for healing and for ease of pain and burden. For all of those that are overwhelmed with addictions and afflictions, we pray for their power in recovery and healing, we pray for resilience. We pray for organizations that have to tend to them and care for them and support them. And may we prayerfully support them as well, not judge them, Lord, but discern what their need is. And in the upcoming graduations and celebrations, we certainly pray for our teachers, our professors, our administrators. We honor the work and all the energy that it has been put forth to cross the line whether it is at a collegiate level, a high school level, um, a specific nursing degree, a doctorate degree. We think of eighth grade and even nursery school graduations. And for those, Lord, getting their GED and gaining that education and all of those that have to surround them and support them to help them along the way. 
We pray for Douglas Avenue to be a place where individuals can feel at home and feel connected. We pray for, again, final projects and tests. Lord, we pray for those that are feeling anxious and overcome with worry and stress, discombobulated, for those that are feeling depression and anxiety, mental health issues that wane us from seeing and feeling what a normal response may be. Let us acknowledge those individuals, Lord, and let us continue to pray for them through their battles and through their struggles. We pray for families that are struggling, Lord, for toxicity in homes. We pray for foster and adoptive families, not only the individuals that welcome them into the homes, but those that are a part of the system, Lord, that they might feel special and they might know and feel your love. And for the individual and the beautiful person that you have made them, surround them with people that will care for them in a loving and a authentic kind of way. We lift up those who are traveling, Lord, for Meredith and for Joy coming home, for Nancy who is on the road, and for all of those who are planning their, their summer travels. Let it be in fun. Let it be with ease. Let them enjoy this beautiful countryside and wherever it is that they are going to. We lift up our leaders, our authorities, our community. We lift up our doctors, our nurses, our caregivers, our first responders, our EMTs, our firemen, our police. All of those, Lord, that go headfirst into these traumatic situations, give them strength, give them peace, give them rest when they need it. We pray for our social systems to be grace-filled and respectful for one another. We pray for hard conversations, Lord, and we pray for ministry as we work together in this society, in this community. And as always, Lord, we lift to you our military men and women, those that are here, those that are abroad, and the families that must continue to support them and love them. Because we know that love never fails. Prophecies will cease, tongues will be stilled, knowledge will pass away. But Lord, your love, your hope, and your faith will always be there. Forgive us for the clanging symbols that we can be, Forgive us, Lord, where we fall heir to our earthly ways as we are fully known by you. Bless this time as we come together and we say the prayer, Lord, that you have taught your disciples to pray by praying. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our trespasses, Lord, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is your kingdom and your power and your glory forever and forever. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you for joining us in worship this morning. God loves you, and so do we, and there is no doubt that together we are sharing God's love and changing lives here in Springfield and throughout the world. This week, you'll be receiving the May edition of our Courier Print newsletter in the mail. If you're looking for opportunities to grow your faith in service and fellowship with others within the church, please pay close attention to that newsletter. On the front cover, you'll find all of the important dates that are happening in a very busy summer at Douglas Avenue. And if you're not receiving our newsletters, why not take a moment right now to complete our online contact form? It will make sure you're in the know about everything that goes on at the church and allow us to come up beside you in your walk of faith. It only takes a moment, and we hope you'll do it today. If your next step in your walk of faith includes membership at Douglas Avenue, we hope you'll join us next Sunday at 915 in the Great Hall for our new member meetup. You'll get an opportunity to learn more about our church and our denomination. Please join us. You can call the church office to RSVP. In addition, next Sunday we'll be reviving a wonderful tradition of our church, Music Extravaganza Sunday. It will be the opportunity for you to hear our talented musicians and to thank them for their service and leadership over the course of the church year. 
Then on Sunday, May 22nd, we'll be honoring those in our church family who are graduating this year. If you have a graduate in your family, please notify the church office. We want to make sure that we don't miss anyone. While we are finally starting to enjoy some of that warmer spring weather we've been promised, food insecurity remains a problem right here in our own community. We hope you'll take the opportunity this week to help us restock the DAUMC Food Micropantry, which is located on the west side of the campus at the door to the Education Building. The DAUMC Youth Group meets every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. in the Round Room on the lower level. Right now, they're busy planning their upcoming mission trip to Mountaintop in Tennessee. And this weekend, they're providing coffee and donuts for a free will offering between services. This is part of their fundraising effort for their mission trip. We hope you will contribute generously. You know that your volunteer and financial support means so much to everything we do here at Douglas Avenue. We try to make it easy to give. In addition to in-person giving, you can use our online giving portal, you can mail or bring a check to the church, or you can use ACH Bank Transfer. If you need any help in setting up a giving plan, please don't hesitate to call the church office. But now it's time to return to worship. Please join us in singing Love Divine, All Love is Excelling. Thank you for joining in this time of worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It's been such a joy to have this time together and I pray that your whole experience has been good and uplifting and powerful, that you will join with us again for online worship or join with us for worship in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30 a.m. at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I want to remind you about that contact form. Please do use that today and remember that there is a place there for prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. We love to pray with you, uh, want to be a part of your life of faith and have these opportunities together to worship, worship and be in service and grow in our faith together. So please do use that contact form today. Now, as you go into your day, go knowing that the God of love is with you, that Jesus Christ loves you, that the Holy Spirit is with you, guiding you each step of the way. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.